welcome to Forbidden Planet TV and on today's episode we are joined by the great Jasper Ford to discuss Red Side Story. Hi Jasper. Hello, hello. Love, lovely to have you here at uh, Forbidden Planet Towers. Yeah, great so, to be here. Yes, yes, yes be good. Here. You've just been obviously in the store signing yeah. many, many copies. Many, many copies. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of people came in, uh, yes, which was good. great, just so chatting to readers, which is always great fun. Yes. Um, yeah, it was good, good. So what made you decide after the gap from <laughs> Shades of Grey yeah. what made yes. you decide to, to come back well it was it was it was interesting because uh, Shades of Grey so Red Side Story is, is a sequel to Shades of Grey and Shades of Grey came out in 2009 mm. right that was That's when crazy. It, it was a long time ago this was when Barack Obama came into uh, <gasps> yeah, was, was okay. sworn in mm -hmm. it was also the beginning of Bitcoin right oh God. so okay. yes exactly so <laughs> wow. almost you know pre-blockchain so it came out in 2009 and although there were quite a few people who were very enthusiastic enthusiastic about it mm. um general readership sort of didn't really pick it up so much mm -hmm. um so it's always had fans but it's it hasn't had that many and I, and i think at the time we were thinking ah okay well let's go you know, back to what we know, Thursday next, series I've been doing before, and then I did a series of children's books, and one thing led to another. And then about, about sort of six years ago, six, seven years ago, I started getting these emails of people who were saying, you know, dear Jasper, you know, at the end of the book, you rashly said there would be, you know, two two sequels. What's going on? Um, and, and these became more you know, more sort of, you know, vociferous, if you like, you know, but polite in a British way, mm -hmm. you know. I'd really like you to write the yes. sequel now, Mr. Yes. Ford, that kind of stuff, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and I think also what was happening is that people were being very generous and they were saying, you know, of all your books, you know, this is the one that I enjoyed the most mm. because it's really out there. Um, it's very unusual and it's, you know, ideas that we've never seen before or even thought of before. So, um, uh, and then, and and finally, I said to my um, publishers, I said, I think it's about time to do the number two. And they said, yes, we agree. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, here it is. So it's it's down to readers. It's down to the readers. It's there down to go. readers. There yeah, go. Powerful. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and you mentioned, obviously, kind of the, the time when you were writing the first book. Mm. So bearing in mind how much has changed. Mm. Um, how do you think that kind of affected or influenced yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, to answer that, I suppose, I have to go back to Shades of Grey, because it was my seventh book. Mm -hmm. And up until then, I've been doing the Thursday Next series, which is about a um, someone who travels inside fiction, a literary detective. And I did two nursery crime books, which were police procedurals mm -hmm. based on, um, one of them was based on Humpty Dumpty, retelling of Humpty Dumpty as a murder mystery, and then um, The Three Bears mm -hmm. as a missing person. So I was kind of moving familiar furniture around in people's heads, you know, and I was taking other ideas that people had used and it's very familiar mm -hmm. and then you're doing unfamiliar things with familiar things and it's it's kind of a fun and exciting a bit weird. However, so Shades of Grey was me thinking I need to write my own novel, mm. right, with my own characters, my own situations that doesn't rely <laughs> on, you know, on the, the goodwill of past um, mm. authors. Um, so, so that's what I did and I kind of pushed the boat out a little bit and it's mm. I think really quite speculative and that might be the reason why it didn't gain perhaps the, the traction that I wanted. Um, so it was me sort of bouncing off the walls mm -hmm. and just saying look this is what I can do da 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 and when I came to write the sequel I was kind of thinking I'm gonna have to rein that in a little bit because I've written quite a few books since mm -hmm. then and I've done books perhaps a little more satirical and serious The Constant Rabbit which mm -hmm. is my Brexit anger book and then I did Early Riser which is about hibernation um, and I think they were more sort of slightly more topical, slightly more mm. satirical. And I think Red Side Story, I wanted to, first of all, I had to carry it on exactly where it left off. Yes. Because I think people will be rereading yeah. Shades of Grey. Yeah. <laughs> and the one, th if you've just reread a book, mm. the sequel, you just want to carry on. Yes. So that's really important. <laughs> um, but I think I wanted also to try and take it away from this bouncing off the walls. Mm. And, you know, this is what I can do. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this weird? weird idea you know look how funky and you know hopefully original I can be and just try and get it back into where I want it to go with a kind of more satirical slightly political edge to it um, and also leading into um, number three in the series so there will be a third 
and um, it's how long will we be? <laughs> that's always the question isn't it always yeah and how long will that be Mr. Paul? not 13 years no, no I, I'm I'm hoping um the next the next book is a Thursday next book uh, and then I've got a standalone I want to write and then I think um there'll be the third and the third and final in the Shades of Grey series so I don't want to I don't want to lose the thing about this I had to reread it like three yes. times to make copious notes mm. and even then still got a few continuity errors um in there annoyingly um so I don't want to leave it too long and it's yes. and it's actually it's 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 not so much uh, we ended on a cliffhanger with the first book mm. this one uh, ends on a big reveal in which you're gonna want to know more yes and and then I'm yeah I'm gonna have to so that's forcing you to <laughs> yeah, yeah and I'm kind of excited yeah about where it goes for a number of reasons which I shouldn't really reveal um <laughs> And I'm kind of excited where, where that would take it. So in many ways, I was, yeah, I was reining myself in. I was trying to smooth it out and then take it to a place where I think the series uh, should go as a more mature writer, as I am yeah. these days. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Um, and you, you mentioned, obviously, about your other works and kind of the topical nature, but there's definitely the the interesting conversation to be had in regards to, I suppose, the bureaucracy of the world mm. and how kind of the the colour system kind of works mm. in the world. So where did all those kind of initial ideas come from? Um, I think um, I, I like the idea of using visual colour mm. as, as a motive because the visual colour only belongs to anything that can see it. Mm. Right. So this room, colourful though it is, when we leave it, mm. there is no colour in here. It only exists because we can see it and we perceive it in our mm. in our mind. So it's like a, a sound, mm. you know. If literally, if there's nothing to hear a tree, it doesn't make any sound because mm. sound is something that we clothe the environment with. It, you know, so, same with color. So I like that idea, and I wanted to do something with uh, visual color. And I thought, right, hierarchy, right? Let's mm. base hierarchy on the colors that we can see, and then make it into a sort of uh, a very very authoritarian but instead of taking the 19 uh, 1984 mm. with an external authority is to have a, uh, a society which is kind of policing itself so you're not only uh, the prisoner but also the jail mm. the jail guard which I kind of like because <laughs> um, you're, you're actually encompassing yourself in mm. these sort of your, your own conventions and I, and I think that there's a lot of that that goes on you know in the world it's yes. that we don't do a lot of things because we feel we can't mm. when in fact we should just do whatever you know we really feel we want to do mm. you know obviously mm. you know morals um you know um encompassing so so there was that kind of sense of what i wanted to do with it and i like the it's kind of it it it's very like i modeled it on sort of british public schools <laughs> yes. you know so yeah. <laughs> a lot of those rules and there's have prefects mm. so it's also that you know eternally at school with teachers telling you what to do with it which is my sort of my idea of hell you know and I think is a couple of people I think other people would agree with that yes so I, I was sort of taking those sort of terrors and I, I kind of say it's you know mixing the Khmer Rouge meets Eton you know that's sort of I shouldn't really say that but that was sort of you know where I'm kind of going with it yes yeah that, it's quite interesting you say about the teachers because I think we've probably all got stories of um horrendous teachers in our past oh too. yeah being told to do stuff you know and it's like and, and not being and having to comply and this sort yes. and this and this full space uh, level of um uh seniority mm, yes. and you know and the worst thing in the world is some some complete and utter plonker being made a prefect over you and then they start lauding it yes and that's like the worst thing that can happen mm. ever at school mm -hmm. you know and you're not made a prefect and they are yeah. And they're a complete and utter twazo, <laughs> and and they start. Oh, you thought, you know, do yes. all this sort of stuff. Luckily, I, I didn't have prefects at my okay. school, so I, I was spared all this. But I can imagine it's pretty hideous. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think we had prefects as such, but you definitely. I suppose you had students who would kind of suck up to teachers. So mm. yeah, if if yeah. you were doing something like you yeah. shouldn't be doing. And, and, and it's terrible because it's it's how it's how humans bring up children yeah. and you end up if you if you're in that sort of you know situation then obviously your world outside of school is kind of modeled on that because mm. these are your teenage years so i think there's there's certainly room for improvement yes yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. Yeah. um something that i love about all of your books is that and especially with with this series is that there's kind of such a humor to them mm. and 
I don't think there is a huge amount of authors doing humour in kind of fancy and stuff as much anymore. We obviously had a rich age of kind of mm. Terry Pratchett and Douglas yeah. Evans doing some fantastic things. Mm. Um, just thinking about even 80s and 90s TV, things like Red Dwarf and just the very kind of silly sci-fi fancy humour mm. um, that isn't as prevalent anymore. Is that a conscious decision for you to kind of inject some humour into your... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the... You know, one. I think one of the. I mean, we. You know, we were for authors who work in the genres. You know, we're all. I always considered we feel we feel sort of slightly lowly amongst the. You know, the the literary <laughs> set. You know, so we. You know, if you work in the genres, you've always got a bit of a beef with the literary yeah. set. And and what really annoys me about a lot of those literary books mm -hmm. is 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 the lack of humour, mm -hmm. and humans are funny. Mm -hmm. You know, and even in the worst situations ever they're always funny you know and and I think if you don't have that in a book people think well you know if you put s silly humor in a book then you're being frivolous and it's like no you're being realistic you know I don't know you, do you remember a film called Blood Diamond yes do you remember that yes, right yeah. it's a serious movie mm. about a very serious subject. Mm -hmm. it's not a comedy but there's a situation where the DiCaprio character arrives in this smoking village and like people have been massacred and it's smoking and it's a ruin and the one guy who survived is this old guy um and uh, and the light and he goes up to this old guy and the old guy says something like um well it's a good job we didn't have any oil <laughs> and it's like that is real mm. that is absolutely real mm. and it was this sort of dark comedic moment and to put that in the script and for a director to put it and for DiCaprio to say yes we're going to go for it mm. and for the actor who played the, the old guy it's completely real completely real mm. so I think that's why I like to put humour in it because it's it's so real it's authentic mm. people are funny yes yeah and people yeah. will say the the wrong thing <laughs> as yes. well yeah the totally they'll say totally the wrong thing mm. Mm -hmm. you know so you know so I always you know do put and there is a bit of you know sort of I, I do like sort of slightly anarchic you know silly silly ideas and I put those in as well and perhaps I sometimes I do too much but I I, I like it I think the world is you know mm. we need a bit of levity don't yes. we yes definitely <laughs> especially now De 2024 De oh God, yeah I mean, so it's already been quite a year already yeah so. and we're only in february oh, uh, oh. Yeah. and it's funny you should mention about literary fiction in particular because there mm. is kind of a, an element of serious awards for serious books yeah. you know that yeah. that kind of thing and i used to remember i i worked at waterstones for years and whenever say the man booker or something was mm. announced and everyone would come rushing to pick up the book mm. and i would say probably 70 percent of those people never read the no. book no it would be on their coffee table yeah. yeah just just to be seen and i i i would rather that yeah. uh that a book is read and loved yes than exactly. it's just yeah yeah it's readers just, should be as true to themselves as authors are yes you know, so. yeah yeah, it, it's a big problem, and um, and I, I I don't so much belong to it anymore. But I used to belong to a um, a readers writers group, oh. right? Uh, writers, sorry, writers readers group, mm. um, and most of the writers within it were what I would call more literary authors. Mm. And we we read a, a couple of books in which a a literary author had tried to do what we do, and and but they hadn't read mm. what we write. Yeah. They hadn't done you know SF masterworks mm. or anything like that. Or a post-apocalyptic novel, and they and they were basically it was kind of just real basic stuff, and and it was watching them try to struggle in a genre that they knew nothing about mm. at all, um, which was, I, and it just made it look terrible. Yeah, I yeah. I think there's there's almost a, a kind of false idea that writing sci-fi and fantasy is easy yes. and therefore yes. yeah. anyone can do it yes it's like thing. saying children's book it's for children yes. it's easy yeah. and it's got no it's not <laughs> no, easy it's actually. incredibly hard yes yeah. you know, incredibly hard yeah so yeah and, and, the, and the thought that yeah oh yes of course i can do that you mm. know but they're straying into into things that they just don't understand yes yeah leave, leave it, it to the professionals. just leave it, leave it to us <laughs> we've been doing this stuff for years we know what we're doing just just leave it to us yeah. <laughs> So we have to uh, talk about obviously re revisiting the characters as well. Mm, so okay. how difficult was it? Again, kind of you've left these characters in, in limbo or mm. <laughs> almost mm. for a period of time. Like 
rewriting or coming back to write Eddie? Like, how how has he changed, and how has your process changed? Yeah, it's um, yeah, because it, but uh, I mean, you know, people say it's been thirteen years for us, mm. but in the book, it's been two weeks. Yes, right. So, so for Eddie <laughs> and Jane <laughs> and everyone else, nothing's changed. Really, nothing's changed mm. at all. I think what I had to do was just I I reread it three times. Um, uh, twice on audio uh, and then once to actually make notes specific notes about it and once I did that I kind of had a feel for them mm. and it's you know it's quite interesting I mean it's a, a question that comes up quite a lot you know if you're writing first next and could you instantly write um, you know in Jane's voice or in Eddie's voice um, you know could you flip yeah, over yes. and yes because mm. humans do this all the time because a conversation that you might have with your gran or your mum or your best friend or a stranger completely different and mm. yet you would go bang 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 and you would switch instantly and mm. without thinking about it so I think humans are very good in placing themselves in a new situation mm. and then speaking from that new situation and I think there's a lot of obviously you know as a, as a writer you take you know your humanness and you put it in it but there's a lot of transferable skills that we don't actually know we have as mm. as writers and as people um, and, and and that's why I think a lot of writing is this sort of subtle dark art mm. that we don't kind of know how we do it because a lot of stuff it's like you know explain how how you're human you know what do, yeah, what do you yeah. do as a human so it's like being a human what do, you, what do you find is most interesting about a human you go, well, I don't know you know um, and we do all these things where in mm -hmm. social integration that that works because of the situation and and you kind of it's a dark art you don't know how you do it you just do it mm -hmm. so um so i just got i just reread and i got back into it and got back into the characters because eddie changed a lot from the beginning of um shades of gray to the end of shades of gray so i had to use eddie from the end of shades of gray and, and jane and i just just carried on yeah you know and it seemed to kind of work and you have the ancillary characters mm. coming in and being hideous um and they bounce off the situations mm. That are there and you kind of know what they're going to do so you just you just it's like sort of riding a bicycle really, with a, bit of, <laughs> a bit of practice i mean it, it's always good to be able to kind of come straight back into the world because obviously uh, i like many other uh, readers are, are waiting on certain people to finish up <laughs> a certain series yeah. uh, which may or may not happen um yeah. so it's, it's always reassuring to hear that someone could just yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, you just have to reread it mm. and get back into the, the flow and books have an internal logic to them as well mm. and there's of course some things that Jane and Edward can't do yeah. and you know that and mm. that that controls kind of what they what they get up to so yeah. and did you um with both of these books are you kind of a planner like is everything kind of on like the murder wall kind of thing oh, where yeah, you've got like strings and <laughs> like oh, this person to... was here last time I left them and where are they now kind of yeah thing. I, I think there must be like one person who you know in a movie you've always yes. got all the pictures and the yeah. red strings and you yes. say I think there's one person who does that because they always look the same <laughs> and it's like ah oh, we need so and so we've got to yeah. have the you know and <laughs> For, for the for the protagonist to look at and like do this you yeah. know. Oh, um <laughs> i wish i could but i i don't uh i don't have any i don't have any notes mm. really uh when i'm when i'm doing a sequel i write up a whole bunch of things that i have to try and remember to put in it mm. and things that have happened you know to get the continuity correct yeah. um but i don't i don't do a big murder wall i don't do any mm. of that uh i just just sort of keep it in my head and work on the book very intensely mm. Um, and and then it kind of just stays in, really, um, and and I it just sort of carries on. And then I, when I'm when I'm writing, I'll sort of write you know the first ten thousand words, and then I'll go back, and then rewrite it, mm. and get to fifteen thousand, and then I'll go mm, okay, and I'll go back, <laughs> and I'll start again and go. So I'm constantly combing through the prose, mm. and then and then you get the, you know the the rhythm. Yes. And the feel of it yeah. all quite well. And then I just get longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And then I say, oh, that's really good. I'm at 70,000 words. And I go back. <laughs> and then go through it again. And, and as you do it, you, yeah. you improve storylines, you improve mm -hmm. dialogue. You think, OK, I thought this was going to work as a subplot, but it's clearly not. So let's get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And then right until the last bit and you get the last part of the book, which is the least rewritten. Isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah so unless you've I've written in. it first, which I never do. <laughs> um, so it's the least rewritten part of the book. Mm. So the, the the final part of the book I, is, is least in my memory. Um, but the beginning, you know, yeah. all set pieces that I like. Mm. Yeah. 
we had um, previously on uh, our YouTube channel, we had Ali Wilkes talking about her latest horror novel, and mm. she was saying about how she um, has killed off quite a few of the, the characters. Mm. Um, but then having to kind of like maybe think back to say, oh, is this person where did, are they alive? Are they, <laughs> kind of, are they dead? Are they still alive? Well, I have I have Kate. I have a secret weapon by the name of Katie Kylie, who really knows my books very well, <laughs> and I send the manuscript to her, ah, and she right, checks okay. continuity for me. Mm -hmm. And she and there was well, there was a really bad one actually in this one where um, I, I have a I have a character I can't remember her name now Tomo Tomo Cinnabar's sister, mm. right? And she does something throughout the entire book. And and Katie said to me, okay, um, Tomo invented his sister, so he could so it worked for his marriage market oh, sort of okay, things. Yeah. So she doesn't actually exist. Mm. So I had to swiftly change it to a second cousin named Phoebe <laughs> or something. I can't remember what it is now. But yeah, so you do need a continuity checker. Yes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the, unfortunately. And Katie is waiting there to help me out. And save my <laughs> butt. <laughs> Now, with um, with both books, you have, I suppose, a very different way of doing star-crossed lovers. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in Red Side Story, without too many spoilers, are, are you kind of hoping that they're going to end up together? <laughs> um, without too many spoilers, um, yes. I mean, I, I, I mean, star-crossed lovers. I mean, it's always. It's it's always a great thing to to write, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's a mainstay yeah. uh, for humans telling story, romantic stories, mm. you know, like forever. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you've seen the British version of The Office. As far yes. as, as far, it's it's a love story, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Will 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 the two of them get together? Mm. And that's the only interesting thing in it, as mm. far as I'm concerned. All the rest <laughs> of the per peripheral characters, mm. it's like, will they get together, or mm. will she end up with that horrible bloke who works down in? Uh, down in the warehouse yeah. you know which you you clearly do not want <laughs> um so i think it's really important but it, it's it's yeah i mean to have two characters who can't be together mm -hmm. who should be together mm -hmm. you know it's 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 just a it's a really nice thing that sort of works i think really well so i mean poor eddie and jane i really do put them put them through the mill a bit mm -hmm. but at least they i think we can not a sort of spoiler you know they do spend time together yes you know yeah. that they're, they're not actually physically physically removed mm. uh, from one another yeah but they're kind of socially removed from one another yes. so there's a nice little sort of free song mm. going on there but um yeah it i do ramp it up a bit yeah for those two <laughs> yeah in the book without giving too much away yeah it, it gets pretty it gets pretty pretty hairy for the pair of them i must say mm. yeah are any of your characters kind of based on anyone you know mm, or kind of inspiration from other books or films? Um, it, it, that, yeah, it's, it's another really good question. I think what happens is you, you pick stuff up without really thinking about it. Mm. And then, and then years later, you notice it somewhere or you're reading a book or you're watching TV or you're watching a rerun of something mm. I saw in the seventies. And you hear a bit a line of dialogue, and you go, "That's where I got it," mm. you know. And I was uh, when I was in your in your shop, yeah, Food and Planet. Uh, there was uh, the Ballad of Halo Jones, which was a great story within Dread uh, within um, two thousand AD, back in the back in the eighties, mm. it would have been. And um, and I was just flicking through it, and there was this great sequence where they go onto this planet of high gravity, and they're wearing gravity suits, right? And I went, "Ah, oh, yes," because I have the very similar gravity suits. <laughs> Um, in a Thursday next book, and mm. I went, that's where I got it from, wow. you know. So you 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 in, so it's mm. a difficult one to, to answer yeah, to, because yeah. you get inspired from so many of these wonderful touchstone moments when mm. you're you know in your reading experience while you're growing up, and then it all kind of sort of filters out like like food coming through the ocean, you know, yeah. and you can just sort of nibble away <laughs> at it. Um, I I don't think consciously I don't think they're mm. they're um, based on anyone, but I think maybe all characters are based on versions of the author in some weird way yeah mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um so you know if you're writing r romantic you know uh romantic sort of you know lead or, or their partner it's something that you would obviously you know find attractive mm -hmm. and I, I think jane's a great character yeah. you know she wouldn't be interested in me you know <laughs> obviously but um you know i you know she is a you know really feisty interesting character who doesn't yeah. take any crap from anyone mm -hmm. and that and i think there's something great to admire in that yeah so there's always something either someone like you or someone that you would want to know yes within 
yeah. within your books. Yeah, there's always yeah. that if you have to go to the pub with anyone. Kind yeah, of exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. But I have, you know, I write these, you know, I've, you know, leading leading ladies who are, you know, really very interesting. And but often I think, you know, if they met me. There'd be, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, so anyway, and then they'd be off talking to someone far more interesting, you know, the other side of the room. But, you know, I can always hope. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so for our last c kind of couple of questions. So you mentioned about book three. So have you started writing, thinking of book three? And uh, yes. I mean, I have, a, I, have a, I have a sort of, I have a title, which I'm sort of not really letting, letting out yet. Um, but I, I certainly know where I want it to be mm -hmm. and and what I want it to be about and and that's very much uh, I think very much of its time now mm -hmm. and hopefully will be you know in the three or four years it takes for it to, to come out mm -hmm. um, more prescient then perhaps and I think that's where I was kind of leading with this one is mm -hmm. just to put the characters in a place I want them to be so I can actually really look at a particular subject that that interests me mm -hmm. and I can take them along for the ride and they can take me along <laughs> so yeah it's it's all kind of thinking about it but I don't know 100% you know where we're going with it mm -hmm. but um, certainly taking it to the place I want it to be. Mm. And what are you currently um, reading, watching mm -hmm. okay. and if you game what are you playing? Um, I'm not a gamer I have to say um, I'm probably a little bit you know, grave. So not to say that you know, grave. Don't don't enjoy games. Um, um, so I'm 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 reading um, the Forever War, which is SF Masterworks, a classic mm -hmm. from from seventy five. So I'm reading that at the moment. Um, it's always nice to get recommendations from your children. You know, yeah. Children, they go, hey, Dad, if you because I was reading Left Hand of Darkness, oh, Ursula yes. Le Guin, oh. which is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's like whoa. Yeah. Six, 69 she she wrote that. Yeah. No, 69 I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> could have written that you know like last year mm. and everyone would say wow this is like so now you know so it's, it's just fantastic and I'm reading that on, on the back of that um, and that's great fun I'm having a lot of fun with that um, and what do you say what am I working on um, if you're watching anything oh, watching like anything any, yeah, uh, I, I start I started watching Yellowstone ah, and I initially okay. liked it yes and then I deeply fell out of love with it <laughs> because it was another criminal mob family ah okay and who are made you know what a wonderful family mm -hmm. and you go no these people are horrible it was like sons of anarchy yeah you know i started watching it and then i went no these people are awful and you're trying to make them like heroes mm -hmm. and it's you know in yellowstone it's they're just terrible people and they just kill people and tip them down a, a cliff and that's how they deal with problems and it was kind of turning into a t telly novella i thought uh, as well okay yeah, you know where, where you just dramatic. have them being blown up just mm -hmm. for just for you know just for the drama and then there's no real well who did it and all that well we'll fix that you know yeah. post. so i fell out of love with that so um i'm not i don't think i'm watching anything at the moment really big time but i do like i do like to binge but the yeah. glory days of netflix i think might have been a little bit over yeah i think that yeah. there's been a lot of especially films lately that just feel that they've been rushed for netflix like oh let's do our mm. version of this yeah. and then there's uh, and, and you get the feeling that earlier with Netflix, we, we yeah, we want the, the hours, mm -hmm. but we want the quality. Yes. And now you feel that I think they want the hours, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think there's a, you know, I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to, there was, I think, I think, I'm sure it was Netflix, the first, the first um, season of Fargo. Ah, uh, yes. With Billy yeah, Bob Thornton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a fantastic piece of TV. Yeah. You know, and it's when you get real knockout. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Chernobyl is another really yeah, good piece yeah. to rewatch re that really um so no that's that's about it really yeah i do wonder if some of those things would get made now potentially bearing mm. in mind how things have changed or whether they would just be on a different platform yeah i don't know Thank i don't you. know but we did we tend to we tend to sort of jump around mm. you know so we as you know paramount we just were on paramount i think got it for a month oh, uh, but got it for a month sorry that's mm. fine um so um yeah and then i think my daughter got prime by accident you know how you can get you can sign up to prime by accident okay yeah. it, you know if, if you do not wish to not receive yeah. um you know yeah. prime <laughs> do not click this box but do yeah and you go i don't know whether to click the box no, or not I so i won't and then you've you sign up for let, prime let you exit and you can never get out of prime. <laughs> so, so she got onto prime by accident then we go well whilst we're here yeah you know and then same with disney plus you know just for sort of you know, watch the Mandalorian and then get yes. bored and watch something else. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. the bear's phenomenal. On oh yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that was really good. good. And that's recently won some some major awards as well, yes. proper awards. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Proper, proper, proper awards. awards. Yeah. So um, no, I did I did hear that was really yeah, good. It was very good. What, pla what platform is that? That's on Disney. That's on Disney. Yeah. Plus. Okay. And if you've ever worked as a wait wait staff chefs and like ever worked in a restaurant. You start kind of getting kind of cold sweats. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll watch it with my daughter. She's um, she works in hospitality. Oh, uh, okay, so, you should. Yeah, 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 as a young, as a young, as a very young girl. So, uh, yeah, we'll watch it together. Yeah, I think my uh, my boyfriend thought it was a bit over dramatic, but he's mm. never worked in the hospitality ah. industry, <laughs> and I was just like, no, this is no. it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is how we get it. Yeah. And to finish off the interview today, what colour would you be in? Oh, would I? oh my goodness! Well, I think the entertainers I think are oranges, mm. so I'd probably be a, an orangey, which is quite good because I do like a, like I do like an ochre sort of orangey ochre sort of um, mm. color. So yeah, although although I, yellow is a favourite color, but I wouldn't want to be a yellow. So mm. I think it's probably an orange. Fair. I think an orange, yeah, yeah entertainer. Yeah. 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 Good answer. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today and obviously signing loads of books for us. My, in, my pleasure. In London, and then you're going to be in our Birmingham store in yeah. a couple of days' time. So, any Birmingham based uh, Boom Planet shoppers, head on down. You can see the details on our website, and signed books will be available on them there soon. But thank you so much, and we'll be back soon. Bye. 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 That was great. That was great. That was great. <laughs> Who's the person who reads the continuity? Katie yeah. Kiley, she's one of the <laughs> organisers. She's been like she's been like fifteen years doing doing the Ford Fiesta. Yes, but how long has she been reading the book? If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.